Scott, some scientists today claim the universe is a computer, not in some metaphorical sense, but in a, a literal sense. How can computational complexity theory begin to address this question? Okay, so you know, people love to talk about whether the universe is a computer or not. Personally, I've never understood what on earth that's supposed to mean. <laughs> the problem is that the, the concept of computation is so broad that you can choose to regard just about anything as a computer if you want to, right? Any law governed process can be seen as some sort of computation. You know, a, a waterfall, a, 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 a rock, you know, not a very interesting computer, but fine. Uh, 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 you know, I think uh, one of the best ways to turn the question around is, is to say, well, what would the universe have to do in order to not be a computer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I mean, it could uh, uh, solve some problem which is formally uncomputable, right, uh, according to uh, the, uh, you know, our, our, our current conception of computation, which was laid down by Alan Turing and others in the 1930s, okay? But even then, you could say that the universe is just a more powerful type of computer. Okay, so uh, uh, to me, sort of a more fruitful, more interesting question is to say, okay, suppose that we choose to think about the universe as a computation, right? Which, you know, we certainly can. Okay, then what kind of computation is it, right? So what can it do? I mean, you know, how many bits can it store? You know, how many operations can it perform? Uh, uh, what problems can it solve? What problems can it not solve? Okay, and these are questions that we can actually say something about. Uh, so my field is uh, um, uh, called computational complexity theory. Uh, this is a field that studies sort of what are the fundamental capabilities and limitations of computers, and especially uh, what are the resources that are needed to perform computations. So how much time, how much memory, um, uh, 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 you know, other resources like maybe, you know, randomness or quantum mechanical resources. Uh, uh, now, you know, crucially, you know, we're not interested in sort of the, the exact number, whether a computation takes 10 seconds or 20 seconds to do, okay? Um, uh, what, we're, what we're interested in is the scaling. So as your problem gets larger and larger, sort of at what sort of rate do the resources increase? Okay, so uh, is it linear, you know, in the, in the size of the problem, you know, or is it exponential? Okay, if it's exponential, then this is the sort of thing we consider to be infeasible. Very quickly it becomes so huge, even if it, at the beginning it looks small, very soon it becomes Exactly. Enormous. I mean, the right way to think about it is think of the difference between reading a book, you know, which is 400 pages long, let's say, which, you know, takes you some time, maybe a couple of days or so, versus reading every possible such book yeah. that could be in, you know, the, the like the Library of Babel, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, the latter, you know, you, you know, the universe would have degenerated into like black holes and radiation, bef before. you know, before you'd barely even made a dent. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, uh, you know, and there are certain types of computational problems that actually we we believe, in some cases, we can even prove require these astronomical amounts of time. What are some examples? Okay, of? good. So one example uh, is a uh, um, uh, chess, not not ordinary chess on an eight by eight board. Okay, that's a finite game, and you know we're not exactly sure you know how hard it is to play, but you could imagine generalizing chess to say a board of size n by n. Okay, and then you can ask, how does the complexity of the game increase as a function of the size of the board? And then uh, if the game can go on for, you know, uh, 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 if there's no limit to the number of moves, then it's actually proved that uh, there is no efficient algorithm to, you know, figure out what is the best move to make. Okay, of course, you know, there, there is an algorithm, so a computer could do it in principle, right, because it just has to enumerate every possible sequence of moves of which there's a, some finite number, yeah, right? Yeah, but, as, but as, as N increases, exactly. that, that in, exactly. It, that exactly. goes so, so enormously large, Maybe it's not infinity, but exactly. it, it's, it's effectively infinity. Ex that, that's exactly <laughs> it. And so, uh, so, uh, so in computational complexity, we're interested in the distinction between you know these n n uh, numbers that we can actually handle and the ones that are so large that they're effectively infinity. Right, you could say, right. okay, you know, there are you know other problems like uh, um, the famous traveling salesman problem, where you have uh, a bunch of cities and you know the distance between each pair of them and you want to find the shortest route. And that, that sounds visits simple. Each yeah, it sounds simple, and certainly, you know, if if someone told you that there's a you know a route of 
3,000 miles, let's say, and you said, prove it, and they showed you the route, well, then you could check it pretty yeah, easily, right, right? right? But to actually find the route, if you don't know it, you know, that there are so many possibilities to check, and that's the problem. Right, right? So, so we're comparing <laughs> checking a result yes. with finding the result. Exactly. And, and to the uninitiated, they sound pretty much the same, but they're yep. not. Absolutely not. So, uh, or at least, at least we think that they're not. So this is, <laughs> this, is the this, this, yeah. this leads into, you know, probably the central unsolved problem of theoretical computer science, which is called the P versus NP question. Okay, uh, so P stands for polynomial time. You don't have to worry exactly <laughs> what it means. It's basically the class of all the problems that are feasibly solvable by a digital computer, you mm -hmm. know, a standard one, like mm -hmm. the one on your desk. All right. Okay, and... Um, um, you know, a very, yeah, it's a very large class, includes multiplying numbers, you know, all, you know, most of what we actually do with computers. Okay, okay NP stands for non-deterministic polynomial. This is the class of problems for which you could recognize a solution of, uh, efficiently if someone gives it to you. Okay, and here an ex a good example would be factoring a number. I give you a thousand digit number. Okay, now if, you know, I ask you for the factors. Right now, if someone, uh, you know, gave you the prime factors, then at least, you know, using a computer, it wouldn't be so hard to multiply factors them. meaning the numbers that have to be multiplied together to get the yes to get yes the exactly yeah. exactly the um uh but uh, to go in the other direction to you know uh, I, I give you a number, like, you know, I ask you what, what are the, 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 the prime factors, what are its divisors, right? And there, you know, there could just be so many possibilities to check that you, you wouldn't know where to start. Okay, so, but uh, on the other hand, no one has proved that there's no clever way to do it, right? In fact, there are clever ways that do somewhat better than checking all the possibilities, okay? But is there a way that does much better, okay? That no one knows the answer to, and this is related to, um, this P versus NP question. Now, this question asks, uh, does, does every problem uh, for which we can efficiently recognize a solution actually have the property that we can efficiently find a solution? <laughs> that sounds wildly implausible, yeah. okay? And yet no one can prove, you know, for, the, uh, for 50 years that, that this is not the case. Mm. Okay, and so this is one of the great unsolved problems of mathematics today. And, and why is that so fundamental to, to understand, A, the nature of computation, mm -hmm. and B, the understanding about, is the universe a computer? Good. So, um, okay, well, the way I think about it, it's a question about sort of the limits of creativity. Like, you know, we can all appreciate a, a Mozart symphony, for example, right? But does that mean that we could compose it ourselves? <laughs> well, our intuition says no, okay? And yet, you know, uh, uh, the mathematical counterpart of that is an unsolved problem. We can't actually show that, that, uh, that there are problems where you can recognize a solution and yet not find one yourself, mm -hmm. okay? So I think it's a, you know, it's a very deep question. And, you know, that, that already it is just as a purely mathematical question, sure, okay? which is sure. what P versus NP is. But to me, personally, it becomes even more interesting when you bring physics into the picture and you say, okay, maybe these problems, you know, like uh, factoring huge numbers, you know, are, are hard for the computers we have today, but, you know, maybe that's just a limitation of technology. Maybe there are other computers compatible with the laws of physics that actually could solve these problems. Okay, and in fact, for the last um, uh, 20 years, you know, we've, uh, there's been a field called quantum computing that studies a hypothetical new type of computer, you know, that would be built of quantum mechanical components, and this type of computer actually could solve the factoring problem. Okay, so to me, you know, this is a, uh, an amazing discovery about computation, you know, but then also about physics, right? It tells us that actually quantum mechanics changes, you know, the, it pushes out uh, the limit of what is feasibly computable in the physical universe. So I don't know whether the universe is a computer or even what the, exactly that question means, but uh, uh, we, we do actually know a lot about you know what kind of computer sometimes the universe is if we choose to think of it as one. Okay, so you can say what kind of problems can it solve, and then it seems actually uh, it does provide the resources to solve you know the problem amazing problems like factoring huge numbers okay that you you might have thought were intractable by using quantum mechanics on the other hand other problems like the traveling salesman problem you know finding the shortest route between a collection of cities uh, we believe although no one has proved this that actually these problems are not solvable given the resources of the physical world okay but, so but to answer the question uh -huh. is the universe a computer we have to sort of say is the output of the computation the things 
of which the universe is composed, the physics mm -hmm. that compose everything. Is that, yeah. you, you, you well, need to okay. go to that step. Right. So, so, so you could you know, take a more restricted definition of a computer that says computer has to take some definite input, produce some output right. you know, that's related to the input in some way that you know. And then you could say, all right, if the universe is a computer, you know, who set it up? Right? What's it computing? <laughs> right? you know, I, I don't know. You know maybe uh, uh, the, you, know, the, 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 uh, you could say that the universe is a computer, and what it computes is just itself. Yeah. its own time evolution, right? But this is why it's kind of tautological. This is why I was saying you could think of just about anything as a computer, right? It just, the question is just what does it compute, right? I mean, the other tack you can take is you can ask, okay, so, you know, how many bits can the universe store? How many op, you know, basic operations can it perform? Okay, and there we actually know a lot of, uh, from fundamental physics. Actually, in our observable part of the universe, it seems that um, we can never access more than about 10 to the 122 uh, bits of information. Okay, and uh, the reason for that comes from uh, the dark energy, which is sort of pushing the whole universe apart. And parts that are far enough away from us are actually receding faster than the speed of light. So we can never get access to them. Okay, and uh, um, within our part, there seems to be reasons from quantum gravity that limit the number of bits that can be stored there. Okay, so actually it seems like the universe as a whole might be an infinitely large computation for all anyone knows. Okay, but the part of it that we can access will only ever involve a finite amount of computation. To me, that's a very deep uh, discovery about physics, actually.